astronauts moving in slow motion is another hallmark of the Apollo TV footage. There is no evidence at all of any astronaut making a leap or a jump anywhere near a height commensurate with one sixth G possibilities. But if they were actually simulating EVAs on Earth, they would then need help with their bulky heavyweight suits and backpacks in order to achieve the visual effect of moving around easily in lunar gravity. So enter wire supports. This is a tried and tested way of relieving weight from performers or even flying an actor. Of course, confirmation that wires were used is in the detail. Here in this Apollo 14 footage, you can see a ping, a momentary glint. And again, run slowly. And once more. There are other examples too. This one is from Apollo 17 during the flag scene. You can see the ping at the top of the frame. In this footage from Apollo 16, we have telltale evidence for slightly floating or dangling effect at the jump salute location. It's as if the weight is being taken off the astronaut's feet just a second or so too soon. Compare that sequence with an obvious rehearsal rig. The dangling effect is very evident. And here again, from the same mission, Apollo 16, we have an astronaut who is about to get up. Let me give you a hand, he says. Uh, there goes bag. There goes another bag. Bag, bag. Come Look at it again. The astronaut is getting up with the wire taking the weight, relieving him of five-sixths of the Earth's gravity. A magic trick? No. Just the help of a wire man. This is a slow motion jump that would have been seen live on TV. And here it is at normal speed. The well-rehearsed, pre-recorded material was apparently slowed down by 50% when we saw it on TV. And yes, we've done the necessary work to establish that percentage. It is clear from these rarely seen color television pictures that the crew of Apollo 11 had a high-resolution color video camera with them on their mission. Yet the only pictures broadcast live from the moon's surface were these from a low-definition black-and-white camera. In fact, the networks complained because in addition to this, they were forced to shoot the images second generation off of a projection TV of the technology of 30 years ago and were not even allowed to take a direct feed, which further degraded the quality and clarity of the images. Perhaps this was precisely what NASA and the federal government had in mind. After all, it was a first, regardless of where they were. Better to open up their debut mission with fuzzy pictures and numerous blackouts, rather than show too much revealing detail of a false scene that was yet unproven. And finally, the element that seals their fate. All the footage of Apollo 11 requested from NASA over a five-year period, one gem was discovered just before the completion of this documentary. An old reel received by mistake. It contains the raw or unedited footage of the crew of Apollo 11, Michael Collins, Edwin Aldrin Jr. and Neil Armstrong, staging part of their mission for nearly an hour in living color with exceptionally clear behind the scenes audio of conversations discussing the techniques used to achieve a disingenuous picture depicting the earth at a distance in order to falsely demonstrate their far journey from it and their ability to survive passing through the Van Allen radiation belts. It cannot be misconstrued that this staging was done for some other reason, for the reel itself is slated and dated July 18th, 19th and 20th, 1969, the very days of the mission when they were said to be approaching and achieving lunar orbit. Furthermore, it is apparent they are in genuine zero gravity of the actual spacecraft, necessary to convince the mass media of their authenticity, just not any further than Earth orbit, as you will see. 
In this never before seen or heard footage, not only is the radio conversation between the astronauts and Houston Control audible, there is a secondary, private conversation taking place between the crew and a third confidential party, prompting the astronauts with what to say, when to speak, and how to effectively manipulate the camera to achieve the desired misleading effect. NASA claims that the Houston transmissions were the only ones taking place with the astronauts. Listen now as Houston Control initiates a conversation with the crew, only to find them too preoccupied with the behind-the-scenes trickery to respond. Moments pass and the oversight is picked up on by the clandestine third party who quickly prompts them with talk. Immediately Neil Armstrong speaks. Again, the illusion they are attempting to create is the Earth at a distance to demonstrate their far journey from it and their ability to survive passing through the Van Allen radiation belts. Understand, too, that only about 20 seconds of this raw footage was ever broadcast to the public and these conversations discussing their deception were believed to be private until now. Here they discuss that these television transmissions were in fact not broadcast live as everyone believed. They were first screened and edited for playback later. Hi, uh, Roger Neil. We just wanted a narrative such a weekend when we get the playback we can sort of correlate what we're so much. Here they discuss the fact that they have turned out the lights and have blocked out sunlight from entering the space path through the other windows as to not cause any reflected light to fall onto the spacecraft's wall in the foreground. Okay, very good. Well, we shut out the sun coming in some of the other windows into the spacecraft, so uh, it's looking through a uh, the, uh, number one window and there isn't any uh, reflected light. The reason this was done is so that the truth of the matter would not be revealed. It is this. Though the federal government would have you believe that this is a view of Earth from a distance out of the spacecraft's window as it nears the moon, it is not. What they have ingeniously done is placed the camera at the back of the spacecraft and centered the lens on a circular window in the foreground, outside of which it is completely filled with the Earth in low orbit. The circumference of the window then appears to be the diameter of the Earth at a distance, with the darkened walls of the spacecraft appearing to be the blackness of space around it. That is why they wanted the interior dark and blocked out the sun from any other windows. Here you can see the extruded window, probably two inches thick at the bottom. This is because the Earth's shine is coming in at a downward angle. It also causes the Earth to appear to be an irregularly shaped circle, for you are seeing the outside of the window at the bottom and the inside of the window at the top, which together form two different sized halves of a circle. Subsequently, this take was never used. As they perfected the shot, a crescent-shaped piece of black material was inset slightly into the window to create the illusion of the Earth's terminator line dividing night and day. It is uncannily convincing. During this segment, intended to be edited and played back later for the worldwide television audience, dated July 18, 1969, Neil Armstrong condemns himself as he states that he is 130,000 miles out, or halfway to the moon, as the NASA flight log also states on this date, when he is in reality in low Earth orbit of a few hundred miles. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11, calling in from about 130,000 miles out. Here, during another segment, also intended to air after review, Neil Armstrong falsely explains to the viewers how the shot is attained by putting the camera's lens to the window's glass, as it would have to be if they were the claimed distance away from the Earth. We only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with the TV camera. If the window was completely filled up with a TV camera, as he stated, then an astronaut's arm would not be able to get between the camera and the window, as it obviously does here in this outtake. 
South America becomes invisible just off beyond the Terminator or inside the shadow. You can also notice how the astronaut operating the camera reacted to the mistake by attempting to pan away from it. Blue cast, white bands of major cloud formation across the Earth. This is a segment that they believed wasn't even being recorded, much less suitable for broadcast, for the lens was being zoomed out and the scene was being changed to that of an interior of the astronauts at work and apparently the stop button popped back up on the recorder without notice. Here is the diffused work light that they used to see camera controls but not throw light onto the spacecraft's wall. Here they remove part of the crescent insert Finally, the iris is opened up to see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. Here is the slate for the 19th of July and the same shot of trickery on the 19th of July and then the 20th and the same misleading shot on the 20th. Later that evening, they were said to be walking on the moon. How can this be when they were in Earth orbit only nine hours earlier and the moon is some three days journey away? Furthermore, if they genuinely went to the moon, why would they be faking any part of it? Why this trickery with the window? By faking being halfway to the moon, it becomes apparent that they did so because they could not even go halfway. On the 25th anniversary of the event in 1994, Neil Armstrong made a rare public appearance and held back tears as he spoke these brief cryptic remarks before the next generation of taxpayers. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you we say we have only completed a beginning. We leave you that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. That when examined, these images suggest that man never went to the moon at all. This famous scene of man taking his first steps on the lunar surface is one of the most recognizable in history. But why are such important images so grainy? and hard to see. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Okay, you had a good picture, huh? NASA claims it's the result of 1960s technology. NASA orchestrated the hoax in a very unique way, through television. They had one picture which they completely controlled, black and white, grainy, that convinced everybody we were on the moon. We had no reason to doubt it. They had complete reins over the pictures, over the sound. I mean, sad to say, it was easier than people believe. Evidence suggesting that these images were staged. It's absolutely unreal. Although it appears that the astronauts are moving in the moon's gravity, which is one-sixth that of the Earth, Percy notes that when the speed of the film is doubled, the astronauts appear to be running as if in Earth's gravity. Also, when the footage of the lunar rover is doubled in speed, it looks as if it's driving here on Earth. If there is no air or wind on the moon, why is this American flag waving? The fact that the flag flaps on the moon where there's no atmosphere means that there must have been a little blast of wind out in Area 51 where they shot this. The pictures that we see that allegedly were taken on the moon are absolutely perfect. But with closer examination, Casing says flaws begin to emerge. Unfortunately, errors were made which are now being discovered. Point out that lighting is a major flaw in the lunar photos. Case in point, 
on the moon, the astronauts' only source of light was the sun. They had no extra lighting, uh, no flashes or things like that. Yet in this photograph from Apollo 14, the shadows are cast in different directions, suggesting multiple light sources. The shadows cast by the rocks in the foreground should have been east-west, like the Lem shadows. And in this photo from Apollo 17, again the shadows are pointing in different directions. Outside in sunlight, shadows always run parallel with one another. So the shadows will never intersect. Conspiracy theorists say it's not just the shadows that indicate the use of additional lights, but what has been photographed in the shadows. For example, here's an astronaut who descends into a huge shadow cast by the lunar module. Yet his entire body is still visible. How is it that he is not shrouded in darkness? Here's the same maneuver from another Apollo mission. Again, the astronaut is brightly lit in what is obviously dark shadow. And in this picture, the sun is directly behind the astronaut. His figure should be a silhouette. Yet even the smallest characteristics of his suit are recognizable. It seems like he's standing in the spotlight. And I can't explain that. Uh, that, that escapes me. <laughs> Why? And finally, in this picture with the sun behind the lunar module, the front of the craft is clearly visible. The words United States are crisp and clear. How could these backlit pictures be so detailed? It's because there's more than one light source, which means they're not on the moon. But NASA simply dismisses these arguments. But the questions continue. Why do some of these images shot at different times and different places appear to have identical backgrounds. These two photos seem to have the same mountain backdrop, yet the lunar module is only present in one of them. Seemingly impossible, since the LEM never moved and its base remained even after the mission. Some suggest the same artificial backdrop was used when shooting two entirely separate pictures. Background discrepancies are also apparent in the lunar video. The best evidence are some pictorial anomalies in the photographic record of the trip to the moon. There is one uh, for Apollo 16 where the same shot, the same hill, appears in two different days. This tape was shot on what was reported to be the first of Apollo 16's lunar excursions. But it couldn't pick a better spot. And this video was from the next day at a different location. That is the most beautiful sight. NASA claims the second location was two and a half miles away. But when one video was superimposed over the other, the locations appear identical. Even closer examination of the photos suggest evidence of doctoring. For reference, crosshairs were permanently etched into the lunar cameras, so they would have to appear on top of every image. But in this photo, a crosshair is behind a part of the lunar rover. This situation is impossible and has to be the result of technical manipulation and doctoring of the image. And in this photo from Apollo 11, the equipment in the foreground is covering the crosshair, not behind it. And in another from Apollo 12, the American flag is covering one crosshair and the astronaut is covering the other. When presented with these questionable photos and videos, it's absolutely unreal. This that Apollo was a hoax. When I looked at all the pictures and all the footage, I'm absolutely convinced, I bet my life on it, that we didn't go to the moon. I know for a fact that we didn't. If we zoom in here, you'll see that they are cutting out sections or layers or images, and there's absolutely zero reason to do this. If this was just a practice run in a pool, uh, you would never need to do this kind of editing.
unless you're trying to edit live video. So let's see if that's even possible in uh, today's technology. So we should know that anything that they can show us nowadays, they've had for 20 or 30 years. So it shouldn't surprise us that they have the ability now to simply edit out live items from live video. So you'll see here they're just able to remove items that are sitting on the desk from the live video itself. Probably not very high, hard as it takes the background kind of of that area. And you'll see there has it morphed. Hopefully you saw that. Yeah, you can see it there. That it kind of does come back in. It's not perfect. So we would be able to expect to see some errors. Even with NASA, if they were extremely careful, we might be able to see some errors or some anomalies that would happen because they're editing out these scuba divers. So you see there, there's some stuff on the counter that's also been disappeared. And here again. And this is a good image that shows you the errors in it because it's not perfect. And you can kind of mask it and blend it. But as you move around, occasionally you're going to get a little bit of a ghosting or um, some remnants of whatever it is that you're trying to delete. You see here, they took this uh, grate off the side of this wall and just filled it in with the area around it. So this wouldn't be very difficult at all. You would need some people at the live editing stations uh, just kind of watching, and as long as you had a 20-second or 10-second delay, you'd be just fine. So, is this something they could possibly be doing, and do we have any evidence that that, in fact, is happening? So, in a moment, we're going to watch a actual spacewalk. For now, we are watching the training, and just uh, watch a few things. You can see how these scuba divers assist uh, the astronauts themselves. They um, kind of help them when they need help with a certain knob or to carry their cord or to uh, move some cable or to lift them up by their feet or their backs. You can see here he's kind of pushing them up, uh, giving them a little bit of assistance. And uh, one of the first things is that the structure itself looks like it moves in water. I'm also a little bit zoomed in so you notice that. Um, we're going to be looking at a couple different things, but that one thing that you see flying around there straight in the middle right now, it looks like a black bag. Um, if you watch that, uh, I'm making the assertion that that is actually, you'll see it's hanging on to that ladder there. I guess we'll call that a ladder. And you'll see that the dark spot is holding on to the ladder, causing it to move. And in a second, it will jump from the ladder. You see it? It's leaving that ladder. It has nothing to do with the person. It's jumping onto his back and moving him around. And if you just watch enough of this, you'll see that these people, these are people. These are actual divers, that person there. <clears throat> now, you're not going to see the entire diver. I do think there's a few times that we do see that. But it is live edited out. So it's meant to look like a bag attached to the astronaut. And you'll see that it moves too independent of itself. See there, it's lifting the person up. It's not as if the person is pulling the bag up. The bag's on a big string. There again, you'll see it's hanging on the ladder. And again, it jumps off the ladder onto the back. And then again, later we see it push the person up. So you see here it's jumping onto his back. Uh, what those are are divers, and they are live edited out of the footage. It's not even very difficult to do. As we saw, uh, you can do it as a chroma key type event um, or just have a nice delay where somebody's in there with a brush, and we'll see several examples of uh, them covering up little areas. Uh, so anyway, just keep watching. We'll see. It's uh, definitely my hypothesis that they are simply filming in a pool with a couple um, divers, and the divers go under and assist them, and they are live edited out of any footage that we ever see. So uh, it should be pretty weird that we found this one because I can't imagine them ever letting anything out, especially if it's live edited. They just do it on a five-second delay, and this way they don't make any messes. But by the end of this, you'll see that I believe there was a chroma key issue this day because uh, we see things disappearing in the second view and reappearing, which clearly means that they were ghosted or masked out. So now I've changed the color a little bit. It just gives you a better view. Same thing. Got the brown backpack. You can watch it jump on the man here. And you can tell that that is a person. That's a diver. You can just tell by their movements. See, he jumps up there. He's just swimming there. Now, it looks to us like a backpack is just moving there. But the person is wearing the backpack and they're swimming.
So I know a lot of people always ask, um, well, isn't this just more people to bring into the secret? And I would agree that it looks like it is. Now you got to include some of these um, uh, scuba divers, unless the astronauts themselves do it on the spacewalk. I don't, I'm not really sure. Um, but one thing that we should point out that is interesting, that it's unfortunate, but also true, that people will do almost anything for money. You can see the flipper there. Uh, right straight ahead, you see the flipper down, flipper, and people will do anything for money. And so, ask yourself this question and be honest. Don't say it out loud because you'll probably be less than honest. But ask yourself what you would do for a million dollars, and really think about it. And pretty much the most gross thing I could uh, think of, I'm thinking that most people would do. Um, you know, if you're talking about eating something out of the trash, obviously, <clears throat> I think a lot of people would do that. If you're talking about um, even getting much, much grosser and um, doing something much, much more uh, nefarious even, I think that when you look at it that way and then you also examine the kind of people that you've come to meet in your lifetime um, and then you start thinking, what would those people do? Now, if you look below here, straight ahead, you'll see the shadows uh, kind of going crazy. And you'll see that there's all kinds of stuff going on that uh, don't match what's going on above. And that's because you're just looking at a bag. And if you look at that bag floating around, you'll notice that the shadow kind of coincides with it because there's a diver there. Uh, these are divers. You can actually see their flippers on occasion. Here comes that one around the side. And this is a better color, so you can actually see the flipping. Can you see the kicking? Hope you can. It's there. And so we got them. We know what they're doing, and now we can exploit that. And um, like I said, my wife and I spent a uh, majority of the afternoon going through other videos, and it's pretty freaking obvious. Um, you'll see there that that brown bag is bringing that guy down. And so it's obvious. And from there, we just need to start investigating some of these old spacewalks or even current ones, although we'd have to figure that they've gotten better. Um, but by researching those, I think we're going to find a lot more and put together a pretty good case for treason. All right, so let's watch the brown bag in front here for a second because I want to show you how it morphs out. And you should see it like flashing because it's part of the chroma key activity. And it just was a bad chroma key day for them. Stuff is very flickery. So watch that brown backpack again. Right here, it's going to do something interesting. Okay, here and watch it disappear. See that? How it morphs out. And that's just more chroma key nonsense. It's going to make it look interesting. But again, uh, that thing is hanging from the pole right here. The ladder. And then we'll jump off and swim to his astronaut. There you should be able to easily see the kicking. There it is, kick, 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 move the hand, kick, kick, yeah, clear as could be what is going on. Again, I'm very quickly fast forwarding and rewinding just to kind of get a better view of what's going on. You see him grab the foot there, swing underneath, see him, swing underneath. So I have no idea the response that uh, people will get on this video. I don't know if they'll all, if you'll all say, nope, there's no chance, or if it's as obvious to you as it is to me. And from here we just start... Um, doing closer research at these spacewalks, but that's what they've been doing this whole time, huh? They train in the pool for their real-life pool activity. The only difference is the scuba divers are chroma keyed out, but they're still there. There's one right there at the bottom. That bag is moving independent completely of the astronaut above him. All right, so here we have two astronauts. You see the one at the top and the one at the bottom? Look at the feet of the one at the top. Right there, do you see his feet being grabbed and pulled over? That is by a scuba diver. And if you just look around, you'll see them all the time have to in, interact with these uh, astronauts or to fix something or to give them room to do something. That's baloney. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so uh, keep an eye here coming up. Um, I don't know how I'm going to direct you to where it is. Uh, where the astronaut is on the bottom, look where his legs are. Okay, his legs are in that little divot there. Oh, you see he just got helped. See the hands holding his leg? That was obvious. Wow. 
I'm even seeing things for the first time here. I see shadows moving across there that shouldn't. That person is, that's a scuba diver. Now keep your eyes where that astronaut's legs were. Oh man, this is really bad. See that thing floating away there? Hmm. And it's crazy because what you're seeing, you have to base on your knowledge of how people would move and uh, what things would do in free space. But you'll see clearly after watching it a few times, you can't deny that's what's going on. Um, see, I want to watch that lower right corner there because I saw something earlier. So kind of where that second astronaut is on the right. Just kind of keep an eye on that. Um, and we'll see a little something here. You'll see it kick his legs over there. Okay, so his legs just went kind of underneath that panel. But you'll see something else coming up here in a second. Okay, so he moved away from the panel. Up oh, back under it. Moves away again. Okay, his legs are getting up, so now somebody's going to hold his leg up. There's the hand. See the hands? They're trying to help him stay down. Hands, get him down. That's all it is. They're being blacked out. See that right there? There's there's people pushing him there. You can see their arms. You can see their... Wow. It's even more obvious than I thought. So, Miss and I were watching some Apollo 16 footage, which we're going to be watching now. And in it, there is a spacewalk, I believe, when they're coming home. And there's clearly another scuba diver, so we wanted to point that out. But we'll just kind of skip through this because we've already watched it, and it is hilarious. Or if it's not a scuba diver, you can tell us what is yellow and floating in space <laughs> right next to him. So, you see here, we got the... Uh, I mean, this is science, folks. Don't ever forget it. I don't know why you doubt it kind of rude. I, I don't know. Is this real NASA footage that you're showing us here? Oh, this is website. actually NASA's footage. They have that archive at their, on their site that we just pull from. And this, Missa keeps saying, you know, there's people in there. We got people in there. There's some people in there. And here's that's the wire, stupid. you know, that's needed. Flowing in the wind. All right, come on. Wait, hold on a second. What's the source of this video? This, this is not real NASA footage. But it this is. is Apollo 16 raw footage. <laughs> it, the saddest part about this all is it this is this is science. If it wasn't for this, I would have a hard time giving science a bad name. But when you have evolution to start with, and this is number two, <laughs> the moon landing. I mean, this is a person like in you know in a room or something. Who knows? Looks like a reflection. But uh, what they show here, this is clearly a fake moon. And in a second, they'll have to morph into like a telescope view, so you'll totally see the change. It's pretty. So pretty this is this is filmed through the window from that capsule we just saw. Yes. Mm -hmm. And look, look how they're like able to scan the whole moon. Oh, watch out. <laughs> Here, Here we go. go. So this is just a mess of a piece of film. First of all, I don't know why um, the astronauts don't have backpacks in this spacewalk, but like they don't have their life support. Um, There's so many things wrong with this. I can explain. I don't know. Maybe they would. Would Red's rhetoric explain he has to think this is real, so I guess you'd have to explain it. Oh, yeah. I'm a little bit out of control. So, you know, my opinion would be right here, you've got the uh, scuba divers behind him with his foot. Now, I, you know, I don't see that right here, so but you'll see it in a second. Um, because they got to hold his feet down. So in a second here, and the most obvious part is you see the yellow scuba tank. tank. Yeah. So if it's not a scuba tank, then you need to explain to me what is yellow and attached to the... Well, it's not attached anymore mm -hmm. to the outside of the ship. There was nothing yellow. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a big tank. He doesn't have this time. He doesn't have a a sack hanging around him. You know what I mean? No bag. No bag. And you'll actually see. Okay, so I want you to watch right here. Can you see my mouse? Yeah, right in the middle. Okay, this is this cord is being held by the scuba diver, and you'll be able to see it's not a shadow. That what is? Oh, there's another bubble. There it goes. Bye, bubble. Bye. And um, so you see, this is a hand, and he's just helping him with it. It'll disappear and then it'll come back and it's not a shadow because you can see it. See underneath him here? We'll go back and show that. No. Oop, maybe not. You need to show that scuba tank first because that the rest of this kind of sounds iffy. Oh. There's another bubble. Clearly water. Clearly, uh, you know, NASA's busted. Gigs up. It's obvious now. There goes another bubble. Here it is. Watch it. And I, I'm, I would say that before I saw the scuba guys, um, 
I would say those little things flying off. I'd be like, you know, those could be like little flakies coming off. Like I never was a bubble believer. And I'm still like a 90% bubble believer. But if they're in the water, then they're absolutely. Did you just see that one go right in front of your face? Well, one of the things they do to, to, to fool you is they film this at an angle or upside down at times. So the bubble's not going straight up because they got the camera, you know, turn 15 absolutely. degrees to the side. Another bubble? You'll probably want to rewind in slow mo. Okay. That is oh, a there it is. Diver. <laughs> the, it. You can actually see That's them it. swim out of the oh picture and back into the picture. There's nothing else yellow that he took out there with him. Nope. So what would be yellow that what appears be... out in the middle of space? Oh. So hopefully everybody can see that. But uh, it's a little maybe slow mo it first and then try and pause it. I don't think I have slow mo in here. Oh my god. Can't believe it. We'll watch it again. It... Go ahead. Now, where did you get this video from? NASA's website. Yeah, they have a, a site that's got all the films of all the moon landings. It's like a whole long, it's a white page with all these links. Okay, so there you can see the tank start to appear. There's the diver there going up. Is. Oh, my God. Now the, he doesn't have anything. He didn't take anything yellow out with him. He nope. didn't take anything with him. So it's, there's not even another choice. Mm-mm. Don't and, you um, think NASA would be smart enough to have black tanks? Right? Yeah, I would think so. They right? don't. Um, Maybe now they do. Because no? this is an old video. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Because, you know, they have to and improve. There's another bubble. And everyone that's watching, I encourage you to go to any spacewalk. Try- oh, geez, that was a mess. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Um, any spacewalk, you know, any day. I mean, I wouldn't, I would try and go as old as you can, but uh, there's bubbles coming up everywhere. Yeah. Um, and just watch it knowing that. You watch it with new eyes. That's watch it with new eyes. It. It's so obvious. And then there's so much wrong. Uh, I'll show you when he comes back here that uh, the shadows are wrong. Um, just saw another thing out here, but I don't know what that was. But you can even see, and David even brought this. There's another bubble. David even brought this up that it's purposely degraded, the the video. And just like the one that I did the video on yesterday, it's it's crummy quality on purpose so that you don't notice the morphing in and out of the bag or the changing of its color. They can just say, oh, it's pixel changing right, right. over it. Because they're never like, like the book. Yeah. Like the moon landings, the the reporters at uh, NASA's headquarters, wherever that place is called, they were they were using a rear projection screen of the video, and then they had to film the actual screen. You can't get any more degraded than that. Right. Man, there's just bubbles everywhere. I don't know how nobody's ever seen this. Did he start doing his push-ups yet over there? No. Doesn't he do something? Doesn't his shadow get weird here? I forgot where oh, that when was. When he comes back over. When he does like his No, this whole part back. I thought turned like black or something. Oh, I don't did. remember. I love the other astronaut. He's like peeking. Yeah, what is he doing? I'll watch you from here. In case you fly off into space. Doesn't this look like he doesn't so, have a backpack on? He only, he has like a, a third size backpack. Mini backpack? Oh, rewind to show that one part with the right there where he, I saw that helmet come into view. Oh, that was weird. But it's it could have been this thing. Back, a little bit back. And we're going to go a little bit back and show you this there. Yeah, I think so. Right yeah. there. So I'm not sure what this. It's like a layer of some sort helmet thing is we tried to see what that was but then it disappears but But, uh i think they're just big fans of uh layering and this is what would happen in water if you don't have scuba divers with you there's another bubble you need somebody to take care of your feet okay so now watch here there we go oh get that nice catch (laughs) and you'll see here in a second where it's just all wrong because look where his shadow is now okay but then watch the shadow for. Okay, so you see how there's no shadow here for him. Yeah. So the, the, there cannot be the sun can't be above you, or else this, there'd be a shadow there. He was right next to it, but yet this cord here is showing a shadow on his back, and his leg no right shadow? here. Yeah, that's weird. Will show a shadow on his back. So definitely his feels leg weird. Up. But I would obviously see this right here is a shadow from his leg. Oh. So if he's what was what. What was it just just went over his butt? Can you go back 10 seconds? Yeah, I saw something too. What does he even do with this? Do they bring this in? Is that what he went out there for to get something? I mean, think about that. You're you're going to space. What could possibly go wrong that you would need to go outside for? Like what would be so ridiculous? You would never make anything. He opened something to take it out. Yeah, you would never make something like that. It's just not the way you would... (laughs) Use that spare tire for landing. Oh, did you see that? 
I think that's what he was talking about. I don't remember. This part here? Oh, I don't know. David, what, what did you see? No, there was something that went right over his butt before. Maybe it's coming up. I mean, right like here. a big black stripe. Mm. Or maybe it's the shadow of that the, the, the pipe. Maybe that's all I saw. Like this, so, I mean, the, the, the shadows, yeah, yeah that right there, yeah. yeah, yeah. What is he doing? That looks like a, a scuba diver's arm or something that went up there. And, yeah. and what would be here that's black on his shoe? What's what's causing that shadow? Nope, he fell asleep. <laughs> he's stuck. He's stuck. Somebody gonna help him? Look at those pants. Look, what are those pants that he's wearing? It just They're makes so no funny. sense at all. Like, They're like white. I, mean, I would. Hammer that, pants. It's like a cool, like really warm snowboarding outfit. <laughs> You're getting farther and farther behind. I've had my one for today. Uh, 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 Doing what? Oh, now, okay. Doing what? <laughs> you just did my whiffer deal. Oh, did you fall? No? It's funny how uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite <laughs> reaction, isn't it? Hey, I've heard that before. I'm just going to turn on the volume for a second. So he's trying to figure this thing out. He can't do it's it. It's a science experiment, by the way. Then he says he's going to go take a break, and that's how he takes a break. Just standing there. He just stands there. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> so then they get mad because uh, this guy needs to come help him. And uh, he comes over here in a second. And to then, be the then play the volume when you, the guy comes over because that's funny. Okay. It is hilarious. So now see this white like experiment going on over here? On it's like left. a little um, pylon or something. It looks like it's like, you know, <clears throat> hoisted up or tilted up or something. This guy comes over here and just destroys it. Okay, would James write a box? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just guy just trample it. I'll get it. So let me come over here. Okay. And let me, let me forget this experiment. Probably a million bucks. Just step all over it. Yeah, I guess <laughs> so they play with this for a while, and then this is where this guy falls. Now, remember, if this post goes through your suit or something, you die. Yeah. So, like, we'll get it. We'll float. Float. Let me get my foot down there. You get get Jack. See, that's the key. That's the key. (laughs) (laughs) What is he doing? He's, like, balancing on that thing. Watch how he's, like, sliding. He's, like, sliding at an angle, Uh, kind of. Get away down there. Okay, now try. Slide out there. Go. Go. Get it. Okay, let me put the wrench on it. Then he goes like this. No more from you. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Right here, he falls. He's like talking to your drunk friend. I mean, this is ridiculous. How can people not see this? I know. Watch this part. I mean, this part is so funny because he just tries to take it too far and then falls way over here. And then his buddy tells him, puts his finger up in his face, like, that'll be the last time you do that. Whoop. And it's because it's, it's gone. There you go. <laughs> now watch his buddy go over there and tell him, puts his finger up in his face, like, dude. Get up. Dude, we don't do that. He here. destroyed that entire project. It's Look at trampled. Him. Dude, we don't yeah. do this on the moon. <laughs> we act we act like adults. But but we have moon rocks. I have been messaged with this argument so many times that I have decided to make a short video about it. The number one argument to validate the moon landings when all logic, real science, and photos and video directly from NASA prove the moon landings were fake is moon rocks. They even write articles like this one telling you that you are stupid if you question the moon landings because they have moon rocks and common sense dictates that because we have moon rocks we went to the moon we are going to talk a lot about common sense in this video now what happens when someone has the bright idea or the common sense to test these moon rocks that have been given to museums by a u.s ambassador in 1969 they turn out to be petrified wood and i will link all the articles from what people consider to be reliable news sources in the information section of this video. 
You know what common sense tells me? That NASA is made up of complete liars that lie about everything. And when they are exposed, they question your sanity or intellect if you refuse to believe in their lies anymore. They would have you believe that this official government and NASA website picture does not have a Ziploc bag holding a picture of the moon on the moon on the LEM landing pad. This is not a photo of a man next to the other picture. This is a reflection of tin foil. Science and heat problems, logic and common sense dictate that if these were photographs, that this picture was not taken on the moon. That is why they say it is a reflection of tin foil. They will tell you that your eyes are lying to you. By the way, if you want to zoom in and out of any picture online or any website, simply hold down the control button on your keyboard and scroll up and down with your middle mouse button. This picture is not manipulated in any way. Check it for yourself. Now when these lies are exposed, like these petrified wood moon rocks, they use all media to spin the fact that they are liars, like this article in USA Today. They would have you believe that it is okay that this piece of petrified wood given by a U.S. ambassador and insured for a half a million dollars is not from the moon. They say in this article that of the 135 rocks from the Apollo 17 mission given away to nations or their leaders, only about 25 have been located. By CollectSpace.com a website for space history buffs, NASA fanboys, that has long attempted to compile a list of moon rock whereabouts. They then tell you that this should not be taken to mean that the others are lost, just that the records kept at the time are far from complete. I love how all the plans for the LEM, lunar rover, and now records of the moon rocks are just gone. Common sense tells me that seeing that this was the most important event in the history of mankind, these plans and records would be bronzed. Also in the USA Today article, Jennifer Ross Nazel, a NASA historian, said, NASA turned over the samples to the State Department to distribute, and that we don't have any records about when and to whom the rocks were given. The State Department historian, Tiffany Hamelin, said the office of the historian does not keep records of what became of the moon rocks and to my knowledge there is no one entity that does so yeah why would they keep records of rocks from off the earth they aren't rare or anything right in fact the netherlands is one of the few countries where the location of both the apollo 11 and apollo 17 gift rocks is known britain australia canada and new zealand are others though no one has rocks from both missions on permanent public display and some have been kept in storage for decades. NASA keeps most of the 842 pounds of moon rocks gathered by the Apollo missions locked away giving small samples to researchers and lending a set of larger rocks for exhibitions. This USA Today article then spins facts and tries to say that maybe private collectors have the real moon rocks and many on display may be fake. Heaven forbid that all these fake moon rocks were tested in every one of these museums, but just in case they would be, NASA is thinking ahead here. I would remind you that the moon rocks on display in the Netherlands that were found to be petrified wood were from 1969 were presented by a U.S. ambassador and even came with a plaque. They were insured for a half a million dollars because they were believed to be genuine. NASA is full of it. If you want to believe anything they say, then you are putting your faith in lies. The fact that USA Today and media spins the fact that these rocks are not genuine should lead you somewhere if you have common sense and are capable of critical thinking. Who controls our media? The fact that other nations don't question these things should also lead you somewhere. These people are not smarter than you. They act as if you are an idiot if you see past their lies. 
You are all made in God's image. We all have gifts and talents and have the same mental ability, though some are stronger in some areas and some are stronger in others. Myself, I have no artistic ability whatsoever. I can't paint. I can't construct music. Do not put your faith in these liars. If you do, some people would question your intellect, but they would be wrong. I know that this has nothing to do with intellect. This is brutal and absolute subtle mind control where they tell you what to think, how to think, how to dress, what to eat, what to drink, what is cool, what is not cool, what music is good, what music is bad. Take a look at the rock band The Beatles. People copied their haircuts, their clothing. When The Beatles used drugs, the entire country and world followed. You are not a mindless sheep or just a number. You have a name. You are an individual and you have a choice. You have a God-given intellect to see past these lies. Please use it. NASA's lies are very, very dangerous. Buzz Aldrin said he saw aliens in space. If you believe one lie, you will believe another and another until your illusion of reality bears no resemblance to reality or any real science. Be capable of critical thinking. Ask yourself simple questions, like are dinosaurs carbon dated? When you see the results, what does common sense tell you? Why do Freemasons, who number just about every president and astronaut, believe the Earth is 6,000 years old? Why does this date show up in their diplomas and on their buildings? It is because they think you are a number and a sheep to be led wherever they want. You are better than that. You can ask simple questions, like a child. Questions like, how does a spider know how to weave a web? They would have you believe that it is instinct that they cannot explain. Logic would tell you that this is a complex program inside the spider's DNA. Who programmed it? They destroy your curiosity and corrupt your intellect from the time you are children. They act like they have all the answers. They don't. They are simply manipulative fools and liars, led by the biggest liar and manipulator to ever exist.